All right, we got three good regional political stories, at least good for the talk about the table. I'm not sure good for the guys involved here. But, Andrew, let's start us off and we begin with an update on Senator Menendez. Well, the controversy continues to swirl around him, Rich. Newly unveiled emails between Senator Menendez's office and the Department of Homeland Security detail the senator's efforts to thwart don U.S. donations of cargo screening equipment to the government of the Dominican Republic. Why? Well, because donated equipment could have jeopardized a port security contract that would have benefited Menendez's biggest donor, Solomon Melgin. Six months before those emails were released, Menendez at a Senate hearing raised concerns about the Dominican government's port security. The private firm in question was not mentioned by name by Menendez or his staff. Now, separately, Menendez acknowledged last week that his office had contacted U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in an effort to help Melgin with uh, dispute with those agencies. Furthermore, Menendez also acknowledged that he flew on Melgin's private plane on trips to the Dominican Republic and had initially paid, failed to pay for those trips. Once that came to light, Menendez said he reimbursed Melgin approximately $58,000 for the trips, the Senate Ethics Committee is now investigating that. Initially, the senator was accused of hiring prostitutes in the Dominican Republic, a claim he vehemently denies. Controversy comes just as the senator was to assume the chairmanship of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which a very powerful position. And Durbin, Senator Durbin from Illinois, Democrat, says he still he expects he still get the gig. But there seemed to be a lot of smoke, not a lot of fire on the prostitute thing. That went away. The flight thing, you raise your eyebrows. But... To get involved not once but twice here to make sure a buddy gets a contract and stun with somebody else, it's just at the allegation phase right now. That's not it's so good. Gonna, it's gonna it's gonna come down to what the specifics are of Menendez's involvement. Was he literally pushing for his buddy to get the gig? That's a big no-no. But was he sort of setting the table in a way that would benefit his 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 buddy? That might be more of an ethical uh, violation, or you know. To a certain degree, there, there is a measure of how that's how Washington works. I mean, you, you, the people who are beneficial to your campaign or your candidacy, you tend to do favorable things for. You don't generally do it that overtly. So, it, we're it's gonna we're gonna have to see just what his involvement was, what the benefit was, and also the fact that this guy was having all sorts of tax problems at the time too. So it's it's not just a little bit of uh, this guy dirty look to This guy eleven million uh, yeah. to the IRS. Yeah. All right. And, in fact, uh, we're just getting uh, now that uh, Senator Menendez reconfirming what you had said. He will not step down uh, as a member of that committee or apparently step down in his desire to become the chairman. We're hoping to talk to him about it in Washington tomorrow, yep. and so far we have not uh, All right. gotten that. Next up, uh, blast from the past here, return of Elliot Spitzer, former New York governor who was taken down by his own devices, as we know, seems to be unable to get rid of the political bug after a brief post-scandal stint at CNN and another current TV. Elliot Spitzer now reportedly setting his sights on the oh-so-exciting post of state comptroller in New York. If he does decide to throw his hat in the ring, he'll be taking on the incumbent here and current comptroller Tom DiNapoli, who's less than 700 grand in campaign cash and still little statewide recognition. All right, Dominic. Um, these guys just can't get out of the system, can they? They, they just, well, once you get a taste of the limelight, no matter how you get taken down, they just want to get back in. The bad news about Mr. Spitzer, the rap on him is that he doesn't play well with others. But of course we could say that about the current governor. Uh, but the good news about Mr. Spitzer, he does have, a, he, he's, he's generally considered very smart. He has a lot of good ideas. Remember I told you this, he's coming back. I don't know in what capacity. Uh, I don't know in does what, what field. Does he have friends in Albany or no? No, <laughs> no, but but he but he will be back. And he'll raise money. I, and he'll raise money. And, and Dominic, I'm, I'm sorry, Andrew, didn't you tell me uh, the governor, and speaking of Tom DiNapoli, he gave as much of a smack in the form of a compliment as you can get? Well, everybody wants to know how, what the governor is saying about DiNapoli tonight, and the quote from a recent interview just a few minutes ago, quote, I think he's a capable fellow and he's done a competent job. <laughs> capable and competent. If you got that on a report card, you'd be like... What did you do wrong yeah. in class? And these are two fellow Democrats the, the, here. Napoli you know. faces Napoli. a primary. He's in trouble. Well, I'm going to go ahead and urge Spitzer to She's run because this, this is yeah, going to open this seat up for Republicans <laughs> to come in because there is no way he can win a general Listen, election. It's you. never happening. Spitzer can win he a general win. election. He can win. I, I, watch and see. And, and just say, if he did win, That's he'd scary. be Andrew Cuomo would not be happy. Oh. oh. It would be a oh. worst nightmare. <laughs> but the press would have a field day. I mean, there would be no shortage of I begin to tell you how much they hate each other. I mean, if I could tell you some private stories yeah. from 
<laughs> they hate each other with a passion. So you're saying they hate yeah. each other. And they one thing hate is, each Tom other. Tom Napoli and I even think the attorney general in the state of New York have been muzzled by this governor. There's no muzzling Elliot Spitzer if he got the gig. None. Uh, now, None. speaking of Andrew Cuomo, is it possible, even though he's got high approval ratings still, that he's lost a little bit of his mojo? And Andrew, um, he and Fred Dicker, as we know, have a very good relationship. But not so much lately here. You don't want to turn off Fred Dicker. It seems like that worm is turning, Rich. According to Dicker, as you mentioned from the New York Post, the answer is yes in his latest column. Dicker, as you know, the veteran of the Albany Press Corps, citing unnamed sources to say the governor is letting his obsession with maintaining his high approval ratings cloud his judgment. One source says, quote, it's all about maintaining his numbers now, not about the best policies for the state. Another said, quote, he, Cuomo, is running around like a banshee, blaming his staff and everybody else for the problems of his own making. The source also says that if his identity had to be disclosed, this source, otherwise he'd be, quote, a dead man in Albany. Meanwhile, hydrofracking seeming to loom large in how New York business leaders perceive the governor. Of the upcoming decision on fracking, which could come as early as this week, one top business official said, quote, the New York-Pennsylvania border is like the old Berlin Wall, with Pennsylvania being free West Berlin and prosperity and good jobs thanks to gas drilling. The New York side is communist East Berlin, poor, humbled, and humiliated, with no high-paying pay jobs to speak of, though I so warn you... I think you, he's pro-fracking. I warn yeah. you on that front. Fred Dicker has been pro-fracking for yeah. a long time. Um, now, Dom, just to be clear here, it's not a secret that this governor... Uh, doesn't like um, anyone going off message. If he could have it his way, the press would take his press release, report exactly what they'd say, and if they don't get it, they'll get a call at night here on an off-the-record statement where they get yelled at. We've also been on the other end of that call. Yes, we yes, have. Yeah. Um, this governor, uh, one trait that many successful politicians have, Rudy Giuliani, Governor Cuomo, it's his way, uh, Governor Christie in New Jersey, it's his way or bye-bye. Drink the Kool-Aid or be gone. And I think he's done a good job as governor, but I think in some ways he's even more, I don't know if insecure is the right word, but he's definitely more thin-skinned than Chris Christie, okay? And no, I'm not absolutely. trying to be funny there. I'm, what I'm saying is he, he does not like to brook any kind of dissent. Like, Chris to go back and forth with Senator Sweeney or whatever in the Jersey legislature. This governor, and you're up in Albany a lot. You know how this works. It's almost maniacal how much you have to be on message with exactly. this guy. Exactly. I mean, he, Steve Cohen, one of his top aides, said we operate on two speeds, get along and kill. So it's, <laughs> it's the worst kept secret in Albany. You don't want to be on the wrong side of what they're pushing. But uh, Dicker really so took the gloves yeah. off today, and I think that could is open up. Is it all about fracking as Andrew Ray? No, is not like at all. I mean, fracking. Fred Dicker is a huge Second Amendment guy, very pro-gun, um, so that could have something to do with it. But I think he made a very astute point that you saw it in his State of the State address, he opened up a progressive agenda that he was not uh, pushing in the first two years that he was in office. And now he's playing to the liberal crowd to get reelected and s with his national site. So, uh, you know, a That's lot a of the point. sort of the window dressing stuff he did in the beginning, New York is still ranked 49th out of 50th in terms of business friendly he states. Got, he got Republicans to go you know, along on gun did. control. Are they still afraid of him? Yes, of course they are. I mean, the numbers are still the numbers, but I think there's some chinks in the armor, and this could open up. And I think even among other members of the media that have not had access to him might see this Ooh. as a way to start piling Nobody on a little God. bit. He's only been right. to, only He's been that have not. That's Nobody my point. cares about our problems at home. I get that. He's been the first statewide guy that I can remember. They just knocked anybody. And he's gotten away with it. And the approval ratings say it worked. Exactly. And the one guy I did talk to, Fred Dicker, you know, it's back I and back. I will say yeah. in his favor, though, you know, if you look at how the state was under Spitzer and Patterson, he needed to That's come a giant in. Hurdle, no, huh? no, yeah. I'm saying that he needed to come in with some strong control yeah. mm -hmm. to sort of restore, mm -hmm. you know, function in Albany. And I, I think having that control enabled him to do that. That music means we're shut up and go to break. <laughs> and when we do come back from break, we're going to bring you to the White House for a ceremony that has nothing to do with Republican or Democrats. It's our nation's highest honor for those men and women in the armed services. The Medal of Honor ceremony today will have that be after this.